Hi everyone, I'm going to give you some instructions for the paper chromatography virtual experiment. Um, for those not in my class, I'll post a link to this in the description below. Okay, so there are three parts of the experiment. The first part is a spot test. Basically, we're going to spot these four ions on these pieces of paper and then expose them to developing reagents to see the reaction between the ion and the developing reagent. This will produce some color. We'll use that color in the second and third stage of this uh, virtual lab to be able to find the ions. Um, we can't see them originally. Uh, the ions are uh, invisible to our eye. The spot just looks like a wet spot. Let me show you. Okay, so the first thing you do is you grab a capillary. Okay, see, I got a capillary. Oh, and uh, this works in Google Chrome, but doesn't seem to work in Internet Explorer, so please use Google Chrome. Okay, so you get a capillary tube. See, I got one. Uh, let's get our first ion, okay, so our cobalt 2 plus. We click, and we got a little uh, pink in our capillary tube. And what we'll do is we'll spot uh, our three pieces of paper with the cobalt. I have it set to spot only uh, where I want it, uh, you know, uh, near the, uh, the cobalt name. Okay, so now in the lab, you don't take the uh, same capillary tube and put it into a different um, a container that could contaminate, that will contaminate the container. So each time you get a new capillary tube. Okay, so I got a new capillary tube and I get copper. And I spot here, here, and here. Okay, get a new capillary tube, iron. Spot, spot, spot. New capillary tube, nickel. Spot, spot, and spot. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna expose them to uh, developing reagents, okay? And there's going to be some color changes, all right? So let's find, let's look at our first developing reagents, our K4FeCN6. Okay, so we get some. So we're only going to expose this first uh, piece of paper here to this developing reagent. Okay, and we see we get a reaction for the copper and the iron, but no reaction for the cobalt and nickel. Uh, the copper turns red and the iron turns blue. Okay. Let's get another capillary tube and look at the KSCN in acetone. Okay, so we have it, and we uh, um, spot it on our second uh, piece of paper. Okay, so we get a reaction here, here, but nothing here. So still nothing for uh, the nickel. All right, let's get another capillary tube and get some DMG. We have some DMG some problem here. It doesn't look like DMG does anything, but for DMG to react with, this, with these ions, um, the, um, uh, the solution that these ions are in has to be basic. So what we'll do is we first expose the piece of paper to um, ammonia. Now in the lab, you would take your piece of paper and hold it over your beaker of ammonia under a hood. Okay, so we're doing that. And if you noticed, uh, I had the font of the uh, NH3 change to blue, uh, sorry, to green, just to indicate that this has been exposed to ammonia. Okay, so now we get a new capillary tube, we get some DMG, and we try again. Oh look, so now we have um, some colors. Okay, so next in your lab manual it asks you, what is the best developing reagent for a given ion. Okay, so let's take a look at nickel first. So there's nothing here for nickel, there's nothing here for nickel, and nickel turns pink here. So it looks like um, DMG is the best developing reagent to um, find nickel. I'll explain what that means in a little bit. Okay, or to at least uh, show nickel. Okay, so um, let's use DMG for nickel. So we write that down, okay? Now, uh, let's take a look at iron. 
I noticed there's some red here, some red here, some red, some brownish here, some brownish here. But iron, uh, when exposed to K4FeCN6, turns uh, blue here. So why don't we use, uh, why don't we pick K4FeCN6 as our developing reagent for iron? All right. So um, why don't we look at uh, cobalt? Cobalt is kind of aqua here, and you know, uh, no reaction here, and kind of brown here. But there's also iron that's brown here, so and this aqua is very um, uh, distinct in comparison to these other colors. So let's use uh, uh, KSEN for uh, cobalt. Okay, and the last one is the copper. Okay, so for copper we have either KSEN and it turns kind of dark red which then transitions to a black color here, okay? Uh, we have it blue here, but we don't want to pick DMG because we already, we see iron is already going to be blue uh, in um, the steps two and three below, you, you'll understand in a little bit. So we don't want to pick uh, DMG for uh, copper, okay? And uh, in the lab, this color is sort of, it could it could appear kind of dark reddish, brownish, or blackish. So a little deceptive here. Okay. So why don't we pick uh, for copper K4 FeCN6? Okay. So we have we've picked our four developing reagents um, for our ions. Okay. Oh, great. Let's go to the second stage of our virtual experiment. In this stage here, we're going to spot our four ions again. Okay, spot, 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 and spot. Okay, we have our four ions spotted. Now, in the lab, what you would do is you would take this piece of paper, you would put it into your uh, beaker with your mobile phase, and then you would put some kind of lid or dish over this so that there's a dynamic equilibrium, equilibrium of the liquid phase and the uh, gas phase so that the paper is saturated. Um, this is 90% acetone, so if their lid wasn't on it, the as the solution is moving up the piece of paper, it would rapidly um, evaporate, okay? The lid will uh, prevent this from evaporating rapidly, okay? But again, we're not in a lab, so what we'll do is we'll click on this and we get our uh, HCl acetone and we'll just um, move it over our uh, piece of paper and we see our solvent fronts move up. Now, again, uh, this, this is, let this represent the solvent fronts. Okay, this, this line, this bit, I'm going to show you the, the top here uh, where the bottom of the beaker is would be the solvent front. Okay, does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Okay, um, let me just, so the bottom of the capillary tube would be your solvent fronts. Now, this isn't all the ion moving up, okay? So the ion moves at different rates, okay? This ion, this ion, this ion, this ion, all move at different rates through the piece of paper. So we have to determine where these ions had moved in our piece of paper, okay? Okay, great. So now, a couple minutes ago, we wrote down the best, um, the best developing reagent, okay, to produce our ions, okay? So for copper and for iron, we picked K4FeCN6. Okay, so let's go get a new capillary tube and let's go get some K4FeCN6. Okay, so we have that. And let's expose everything to that. So our copper ion and our uh, iron ion appear, okay? So let's go get our KSEN to find our cobalt. Okay, we got that. Oh, look, there's our cobalt. Okay, and lastly, let's expose this to uh, the let's expose this to some ammonia to make it basic. 
Let's go get our capillary tube and let's go get some DMG. And there. Okay, so now, now we can determine the retention factor. The retention factor is a dimensionless uh, quantity that's a measure of how far an ion moves relative to the solvent front moving, okay? So it would be distance ion traveled divided by distance ion front travels. Okay, so I'm gonna get a capillary tube just to point at things. So again, the solvent front is the bottom of where the capillary tube is pointing, okay? So the distance the solvent front traveled would be from this line here, okay, uh, this uh, horizontal dashed line, to here, okay? The distance the ion traveled would be from this, again, this uh, horizontal line, if you recall, that's, where, that's the center of where the ion uh, started, to the center of where the ion ends, okay? So iron, iron moves all, almost all the way to the top of the solvent front, okay? So um, the zoom, the zoom doesn't matter, okay? Uh, you could be at 100% zoom, 50% zoom, 200% uh, zoom, all you do is you just take a ruler, you measure the distances, okay, let's say from, from the bottom of the capillary tube to here, to the top, that would be your solvent front, and from, again, this line here to the center of the ion, that would be the distance your ion uh, moved. You divide those two, okay, and you would get some number. First, so cobalt, you would say, uh, it looks like maybe 40% or, or 0.4. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Okay. And iron, you know, it would be over 90% or something like that. Okay. So now, that was stage two. The last stage, I'm not going to do for you. It's I'm going to kind of just let you kind of play with this on your own and you figure it out. But I will explain what's going on here. So in this lane here, I have all four of the ions. In this lane here, I again have all four of the ions. Here I have two of the ions, I'm not telling you which two, and here I again have two of the ions. So you're gonna have to try, it. you should be able to do this, you are going to have to try to figure out what those two ions are, the two in this lane and the two in this lane, based on everything that we learned so far. Um, okay, uh, that's the instructions, and again, for those that aren't in the course, I'll post a link to the virtual lab below in case you want to uh, play with it. Uh, okay, well, thank you, and I hope you enjoy it.